Hello everyone and welcome to my video tutorial series here over frontline IT customer support topics. In this lesson we will go over common support problems. Specifically we will look at a couple different objectives that we'll try to meet here over several categories of common end user technology problems that are seen by support agents out in the IT field. Then we will discuss problem solving processes that can be applied to typical support problems. First of all, let's focus on the first objective over several categories of common end-user technology problems. Some of these common end-user problems that we see as IT technicians out in the field are simple ones that pretty much come into eight common problem categories. Those categories are hardware problems, of course. When you think of hardware problems, you naturally think of software problems. We also see network problems. Even though they may not realize it, we also come across user problems. We also can face security problems, documentation problems, vendor problems, and those in the facilities and operating environments. When it comes to hardware problems, we will see problems with the hardware that occur with either the installation of the hardware, perhaps there's some compatibility problems with the hardware when we try putting that in, there will also be some configuration problems when it's there as well as just the basic overall malfunctioning of the hardware. Typically however when it comes to our hardware problems you will see that there is an industry wide protocol followed by hardware and operating system vendors and what we usually see as plug and play standards. When we have this you can, all, you can usually see that this will help load the appropriate drivers when we're installing the hardware. When you are using various troubleshooting techniques, one of the best one when it comes to effective hardware is to use a five-step method, even though we know that CompTIA uses a basic seven-step, but with the five-step you can think about just checking the availability of any updated device drivers for that hardware. Use your, if you're on a Windows system, use your Windows troubleshooters, such as the Fix-It Solution Center. Check the device manager to see if there are any problems as denoted by the yellow triangle there. And if there are any readme files that are there after you install some hardware, check those to see if there are any common issues that you can fix there. And as we all know in the IT world, the best thing to do and what we usually rely on first, um, even if we don't follow all the steps, is to simply check the old internet, the old World Wide Web for any type of problem reports and solutions that we can find out there that someone else has probably come across before us. When it comes to software problems, we usually see software problems that occur from installation problems. Unfortunately, a lot of times with the way the OS has changed or someone's buying software that uh, they may not have done any research for, we find that there are software compatibility problems. There can also be problems with configuration if it's a newer software, you may see software bugs. And another of our software problems we might see are just the performance of the software. And a lot of times that will come to be related to hardware problems where maybe the research wasn't done before the software was purchased and our hardware does not meet the requirements so that we do not have any type of software performance problems. A typical problem you may come across is when software has been installed and you have a software configuration problem where after you've installed the new program this changes the default file associations in your OS or your operating system where it was typically opened with one program now the new program takes that over and changes that to be the default program for that file association so you may need to go in and change that back if for some reason that is not the intention of the software you installed and this does happen pretty frequently so make sure if all of a sudden a customer says oh this doesn't I try to open up a word file and it is opening in such and such program go in and just change your default file associations with what program is to open what type of file extension when it comes to software, make sure to always check your manufacturer's websites 
for any type of patches or updates that are available for your software. And the difference between the two simply is that a patch is a replacement for one or a few modules in the software package to fix known bugs. This is usually designated by adding some type of digit or letter extension as a revision change. Now when it comes to updates, this is a bug fix software release. This is going to repair known bugs in a previous total package version of the software. Make sure to see if you are available to get automatic updates via the internet instead of having to continuously go out there and check those. And you may want to put that on some type of SUS server or in a test environment so you can make sure that when you do put an update in that it does not affect your overall program in case they release it too soon without proper testing or if it conflicts with other software. Now a service pack is going to contain both the patches and updates and it's just a culmination of all that so that's why we call it a pack, a service pack, is it puts all that together into a new version of the program. So if uh, you are familiar with Windows you'll see that every once in a while a service pack will come out and that will include all the updates that occurred up to that point for different fixes that have come out. Uh, so your service packs are obviously going to be much larger. Uh, unfortunately with like Windows 7 they only put out one service pack although the rest of us were waiting for that second service pack to save us many hours of updates after we do a reinstall on the OS. But that is just one thing to check with all of your software that you're putting in. So a great thing for fixing that problem is to check for patches, updates, as well as possibly service packs. Having just talked about hardware and software problems, typically when it comes to network problems, these are going to be a combination of hardware problems and or software problems. So make sure that you use some type of uh, monitoring software to detect if there's a bottleneck as an example um, if you have a a lot of resources being used some type of network monitoring software can say oh, okay well we have too much network usage here and then you might be able to get some more hardware to help disperse the amount of network traffic and help your overall network flow know your different network hardware in case you are having network issues check out that hardware whether it's something is like an access point has failed or maybe you have a weak area as you're walking through a facility and maybe one of your access points has gone out and the other two access points or other access points around that one are trying to compensate for that but yet creating a weak area so you need to know that oh, okay this is probably access point related or perhaps you have a network issue where you have a whole area that's down you might want to check and see if that's a switch problem see if the whole switch has faulted out or it could be as simple as a line connection frequently I find a lot of our network problems occur with the users in which maybe they've disconnected their network cable and it's laying right behind the hardware so make sure to look for the simple things first a lot of times we will find these user problems that we occur as one of those eight most common problem categories and where we have user mistakes or perhaps a misunderstanding by the user. Perhaps the user has selected the wrong product. Uh, a lot of users you will come across will have inadequate training or they just ignored to read their documentation. And if we don't have knowledge base articles out there or continual training, you'll see that a lot of users will just simply forget the information make sure as an IT support professional you can think, look at some of these issues especially if you're seeing them in tickets that you can identify these problems and then provide some training to your users whether it be new users or users that have been around for a while maybe they haven't done something in a while such as let's say they're selecting a network printer make sure you have something out there whether it's a knowledge base article or some annual training some of the common security problems we see are simply a failure to install some type of antivirus or anti-malware anti-spyware software uh, perhaps the software they have is outdated and if they don't keep that software updated get those patches to come through then they are vulnerable and we do not want to have any type of security vulnerabilities in our environments 
one another one you'll see sometimes is issues with passwords. So are users having their passwords laying out in the open or openly sharing those with other people? That should never ever occur in your organization. Another thing to keep in mind with security problems that are related to passwords, make sure that you have password complexity in your environments so that easily guessed passwords cannot be put out there and make sure that users are changing their passwords at a set frequency so that a user doesn't come in. I've seen this in a lot of environments. They have the same password for the longevity of their employment. And that's just a very bad practice. Don't fall into that. And if you come into an environment where that happens, make sure you change that. The six of the eight most common problem categories I mentioned is that of documentation problems. Now, when it comes to having providing good documentation, think about the components of good documentation, such as troubleshooting wizards or providing online help that can be used with a keyword when the user is doing some research. Have a troubleshooting guide. This is a very good documentation to have around, as well as reference manuals and or some type of tutorial guides for beginning users. Quick start guides. If you've ever installed software, almost, you almost always find with very simple software that it comes with a quick start guide. Even with a lot of our simple hardware, we will see these. These are just some components of good documentation. The next common problem category is vendor problems. And some of those common vendor problems you may come across are vendors' tendency to oversell products. Uh, they may promise some features that they don't even have developed yet, so be aware of that. Or they misrepresent what they currently have for product features. Uh, they may, uh, unfortunately, with some like smaller vendor, we may see that they will deliver their software with known bugs and just wanting to get their product out there, and then they'll try to fix it later on. But you don't want to bring in bugs to your environment. Uh, there could be a promise of purchase rebates. We see vaporware. This may be a new term for you. And that's essentially hardware or software products that are described in vendor ads or press releases, but they don't really exist. So beware of vendorware. One of the reasons for some of this vendor or vaporware is to try to see if there's a demand for that out there. Then if there is a great demand, then they will, you know, fish that out or farm that out to see if the it can actually be done and get it out there or oh, okay there really is an interest in this let's start working on this product another reason for this is is just to confuse that company's competitors as well as the users if you think about it so once again just beware of vaporware and the last one is facilities and operating environment as our eighth most common problem categories some of the things you might see are problems with the actual computing facilities, such as with the electricity, the lighting, the air conditioning. We definitely want to be careful with that in our server rooms. We don't want to have any issues with our air conditioning, overheat our hardware, and then cause a system failure and a lot of money to repair. Uh, even workplace ergonomics and safety. You may work in an environment where you're in a very oily area, something like that. Be careful of the different ergonomics. The work should fit you, not you fit the work. So if you need to do something, let's say work in a uh, dark area, make sure that you get the proper light provided to you so that you can actually see to work in those and be very safe. There's also problems with the computing environment, such as data backup and recovery, the security set threats, Unfortunately, I see this in a lot of places where there's a failure to perform, perform preventive maintenance. PMs are essential in the IT world even though they sometimes get overlooked. Make sure to not let this be in your environment. And the second part here is over problem solving processes that can be applied to typical support problems. And there's several of these. Uh, and you can do some research on these such as uh, the one's called Sounds Like Trouble. This is problem number one you can think about. So a user sends you an issue and it says that they've lost sound in their system. That's why we're going to call this problem Sounds Like Trouble. We'll go through some troubleshooting techniques to 
to try to figure out what the problem might be based on you know your history based on a set technique that you have in your environment use all of the skills and tools available to you in this situation as well as lots of other situations in the IT world to help troubleshoot the issue use your techniques use your you know if it's tools you have physical tools or if you what I always call the toolkit the IT toolkit where different uh, software programs you have available to you and or resources such as web resources use all of these to solve have your own problem solving process to apply to these very typical technical support issues we see with our end users if you use your resources you will find that getting these problem solved will be much easier than just reacting and a lot of people will react uh, there are things sites out there you can use whether it's uh, let's say it's an Apple product you can use the Apple knowledge base articles if uh, you're having some hardware problems like Tom's hardware.com is a great site to check out if you're using some type of mobile device and there's an issue maybe go to ifixit.com just know your resources going into your environment as technical support always have your resource available if you have some downtime do research if you come across an issue make sure you're documenting it there are lots of problem solving processes but you have to make the ones that work best for you your own even if it's a culmination of those just make sure that you check with your organization to see if there is a certain problem solving process that you must go through as an example using a script when making phone calls and then within those scripts they may refer you to knowledge base articles to go through and do the problem solving process if you want always go to the internet research 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 that is it for this brief tutorial on common support problems I know we went over a lot of information I hope you will expand your knowledge and do research on other ones as well and hopefully you will take some of this and apply it to preparing you for the IT world or bettering yourself in your current position thank you for following along in my little video tutorial series thank you